Good morning, everyone. My name is Simran Chaudhary, and I welcome you all to Heartwise Talks, brought to you by Voice of Healthcare. In honor of World Heart Day 2024, we present our special series, Heart Smart. Act now for a healthier tomorrow. This series is dedicated to empowering you with a vital knowledge about heart health. Our theme, Use Heart for Action, reflects our commitment to promoting heart disease prevention, encouraging regular health checkups, and advocating for cardiovascular health priorities. Today, we are joined by Dr. Rajalakshmi S, Head of Cardiology at SUT Pattam Hospital, Trivandrum. She has over 28 years of experience experience in interventional cardiology. She specializes in complex procedures like coronary angioplasty, stenting, and pacemaker implantation. A fellow of the Indian American College of Cardiology, as well as a European Society of Cardiology, Dr. Raja Lakshmi is also passionate about preventing cardiology. So we are excited to hear her insights on heart health uh, on this World Heart Day. Welcome to our show, Dr. Raja Lakshmi. Thank you. Ma'am, starting with, we would like to understand by, by, you know, start by understanding cardiovascular risk factors. So could you start by explaining the most common cardiovascular risk factors that people should be aware of? Yeah, uh, the risk factors are the factors which cause more incidence of cardiovascular diseases in people. Yeah, the, there are major risk factors as well as minor. The major risk factors, as you all may be aware, it is smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol levels in the blood. The minor risk factors will be obesity, sedentary lifestyle, a family history of heart disease, such things and a type A personality that is the stress nowadays people undertake during their uh, uh, career etc work related stress etc that is also a minor risk factor these are the major risk factors thanks a lot ma'am for actually emphasizing on the risk factors uh, especially one of the reason is stress which may be overlooked nowadays and people may not consider that that it can cause a threat to your health but are there any specific risk factors that are often overlooked especially in younger individuals or women uh, yeah there are uh, other than the risk factors we have discussed in the young that is smoking is uh, rampant as well as uh, obesity uh, as well as the stress related we have discussed there is also substance abuse Uh, which is such then the family history also contributes in the young they may overlook like uh, you are first degree relatives or somebody has heart problem you are more prone so you should be actually more aware of uh, you are on this health numbers we call actually those numbers we have to keep uh, normal that is your weight your blood pressure all these things actually what we are supposed to do in normal people you should be doing 5 uh, to 10 years before and uh, that is about the young and uh, about the stress also we will come to the management uh, then we will explain it uh, how to avoid stress etc work related issues etc and in women also there are certain factors which are unique to women like uh, preeclampsia and uh, gestational diabetes as well as uh, some early menopause and some autoimmune diseases we call we, these are called risk enhancers So these things are actually unique to women. Sometimes the blood pressure related to um, uh, pregnancy that persists, and uh, they may actually not check subsequently. And uh, diabetes also gestational diabetes. Sometimes it may continue. You may not be aware. So there there are certain things actually which are uh, unique to women, as well as certain factors which uh, make um, uh, them more prone to heart uh, heart problems, like the risk enhancers we call. okay and as well and there is one factor like diabetes and smoking if you have them in women they are more prone for cardiovascular disease than a subject uh, compared uh, to the males with these problems okay they are more prone to cardiovascular problems if you have diabetes and smoking in women okay why why so ma'am in case of women uh, has that more risk factors towards smoking uh and no you are hormonal um the actually the distribution the body and you are actually the body how the body reacts to these factors are slightly different than uh, but maybe the hormones are playing the difference thank you so much for answering that ma'am uh moving on to actually recognizing the symptoms and seeking timely care which is the utmost important so many people delay seeking medical attention for the heart issues heart related issues so what are the key symptoms that should you know uh, prompt immediate care and people should not delay that 
Okay. Uh, you all know uh, it is chest pain. Chest pain is the classical and common symptom. So uh, to describe the um, uh, yeah, what chest pain is uh, heart related, etc. We, uh, we should have a, just an idea. Uh, it is usually the central chest pain in the central part of the chest. And it can be the, um, uh, actually the nature of the pain is that it can be felt as a heaviness or a crushing feeling. And, and that discomfort, it can ascend it to certain areas like throat and sometimes the jaws. And sometimes it uh, actually travels or migrates as numbness towards the left side and uh, left arm along the inner aspect, even up to the tip of the little finger. And rarely to the right arm and even to the back and even upper part of the stomach. And uh, these are radiating or uh, migrating areas where you feel as numbness. So without the chest pain also, uh, sometimes it is called silent. You can have only a sudden onset of uh, breathlessness. Uh, if in the elderly or uh, with the diabetes and high blood pressure, uh, you can have it as silent episodes. So you should be careful when somebody has sudden onset of breath. This is one of the reasons. Uh, and another thing is the profuse sweating, unexplained sweating. And uh, sometimes uh, even loss of consciousness. Sometimes uh, in a variety of uh, heart disease like heart attack, which involves the uh, under surface, inferior surface of the heart, the heart rate pulse rate can come down dramatically, and then you may fall unconscious. So that is mm. also what cause. Also, therefore, there are different signs and symptoms. And uh, so, actually, you have to weigh these symptoms in the um, actually context of uh, somebody uh, somebody's age and gender. Like a 10-year-old girl telling you some uh, pricking pain below the left breast, etc. You don't take it seriously. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, so you have to weigh uh, the, the situation that is the uh, patient's characteristics along with the symptoms. So then you arrive at uh, whether this is possibly cardiac, probably cardiac, etc. Uh, so this is the classical symptoms you should understand. So any pain in the chest is not heart related, but this is a typical or the classical symptom. And the Thanks. nature of the so I have this. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot, ma'am, for explaining all those symptoms. But uh, there are always this possibility. So uh, there's always this possibility that this uh, signs and symptoms may overlap with some other, uh, you know, health issue or problem also. So how can individual better differentiate between heart rate symptoms and other non-cardiac condition to avoid any unnecessary delays? Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, I'll just discuss about the nature of the pain, etc. Something pin pricking, uh, when they are pointing to a particular part, etc. Something which is uh, the discomfort is increasing with the respiration or movements, etc. Such things as, uh, are not heart related. So it is a central, actually, just discomfort and the nature I have described. Uh, other than that, sometimes gas related. If it is related to your food intake, when you are on empty stomach or when you are the, your symptoms in the upper tummy radiating to chest, etc., it is related to food intake, it could be possibly gastro related, Same, maybe some acidity related. Sometimes, as I have told you, when they move their shoulders or uh, arms, etc., the pain is uh, changing or with breath is increasing. Such uh, things actually give the clue that it is not heart related. So everything need not come in the classical or the standard way. Sometimes in diabetes, all these uh, things may not happen. It can just come silently also. Uh, so the, the, the common things, if you are aware, you can take uh, uh, medical help, further medical help. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, just to avoid any kind of all those symptoms. Uh, so we are doing this podcast to spread awareness and we want people to take preventive care. So to promote preventive measures and healthy lifestyle choices, what preventive measures do you recommend to reduce the risk of heart disease, especially in high stress environment where, you know, the clock is clicking 24 hours, there's work pressure, there's family pressure, all those responsibilities on their shoulders. So how can they you know, take care of their heart health uh, amid all those things? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, if you uh, are smoking, you have to uh, first and foremost uh, is uh, stop smoking. Uh, uh, and there is no alternative for that. Uh, you have to stop smoking and a healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle includes diet as well as exercise. Diet mm -hmm. means a healthy diet. You may be aware you have to avoid all these white poisons, that is sugars and salt to the minimum. And also these fried items and junk food you may uh, avoid as far as possible and include a lot of fiber in the diet that is uh, vegetables and fruits you include a lot. Uh, so a healthy lifestyle as well as a, a regular exercise will also help. 
uh, exercise means uh, at least 30 minutes a day into five days a week, which will be 150 minutes per week. It is very helpful. It will actually increase to actually curl down your risk factors also. If you have blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, diabetes, uh, the exercise is useful for that. It increases the protective cholesterol, that is HDL cholesterol, and reduces the harmful cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. So exercise and diet, a healthy lifestyle, it includes and stop smoking. But if you have risk factors like high blood pressure, diabetes, and uh, high cholesterol, uh, along with the healthy diet and exercise, you, you should be taking medicines if actually advocate, advocated by a doctor. And medicines can also be taken uh, to cut down or control your risk factors. These will be the preventive measures uh, to avoid a heart attack, which is possible in 80% of the patients. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, and there is also a scope of, uh, you know, the routine checkups, and we know how important is that. So, how important are routine checkups, and what age should one begin with regular cardiovascular screenings? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, Westerners actually we uh, take as forty, but uh, actually, you know, diabetes is more in Indians, and heart disease is more in Indians. So all these things actually we should be doing at thirty, thirty-five. Actually, ladies maybe thirty-five, and men about thirty should have at least. If you have an annual check in which your blood pressure, cholesterol, sugars, etc., are checked, your body weight, uh, all these things are checked. If it is normal, maybe after a year you can repeat. Ladies, maybe after 35. So uh, if it is 40 for Westerners, it should be uh, less. And the body weight also, your body mass index, what is educated is less than 24. According to your body weight should be maintained with a proportion or ratio according to your uh, height. Uh, so uh, the ratio is uh, body mass index. It should be le kept less than 24 for uh, uh, it is uh, meant for all. For us, actually, we think in the standards, it should be less than 23 body mass index. So keep all these numbers normal by an annual check mm -hmm. and preferably about 30 for males and about 35 for females. And uh, uh, avoiding stress, I um, actually, I was stressing in the uh, actually work-related stress or uh, uh, you are telling domestic or all those things, actually, yoga, meditation, and uh, uh, engaging in yourself in some activities like games or some pa uh, some passionate things or things which will give you some uh, peace of mind. Uh, so for uh, people, it may be different. So some sort of activities and physical activities and games, yoga, meditation, all this will be uh, useful to reduce stress to a certain extent. Thank you, ma'am, for explaining all those pointers to us and to all our audience in such a simple way because at, at a point of time, it becomes very necessary to understand all these, how are these things affecting our health? And uh, rather to, you know, regret later, it's better to take care of our health right now. So uh, moving on to, for, uh, to advocating for cardiovascular health policies. You have tremendous years of experience. You have seen so many cases coming up. So from that experience, I would like to know from a policy perspective, what initiative would you like to see to promote cardiovascular health on a larger scale in India so that all uh, these cases you're seeing nowadays should be decreased? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, actually, these policies should happen at the level of primary health centers or community health centers, uh, not in big referral hospitals. Because uh, if you want to take care of uh, the peripheral, uh, actually people re residing in rural areas, etc., the, uh, their nearby hospitals will be a primary health center. Actually, these are actually working very well in our state. Uh, primary health centers and community health centers so that it is delivered and uh, periodic surveys like annually uh, in the um, uh, uh, actually if you go to the community uh, you are uh, actually these numbers i said blood pressure cholesterol and sugar these can be checked when you even uh, when you do a survey etc this can be done uh, annually or the people actually can be made aware so that they report to the hospital to do this. Uh, actually, these are, can be done as a spot test also, sugars and cholesterol. And uh, taking blood pressure is not a big issue. So these things actually preventable things and uh, spreading um, uh, the fact that uh, smoking is also injurious to health. 
So these are the major risk factors and take care of their body weight also. These should be spread from the level of the primary health centers and um, community health centers and surveys, periodic surveys, annual surveys will be useful. And also, uh, I think uh, there are polypill concept like uh, for blood pressure as well as prevention, uh, blood thinners like aspirin is given and also cholesterol medicine. All these are combined in a pill called polypill. So a single pill, if you administer, which can take care of your blood pressure, cholesterol and blood thinning medicine and such things are available so polypill concept yeah. level, community level it will be very useful this is what i think but also definitely the government will have to take steps yes at the level of the to be implemented at the level of the primary health uh, centers but not referral big hospitals where you can only uh, render treatment okay you don't yeah. reach the um, people at the rural area Okay. I think that is that is very important and the most difficult part to actually uh, reach at the root cause because uh, it, you know nowadays or, or let's say it is very easy to reach out to tier 1, tier 2 cities but the most affected are or unaware are tier 3 and the tribal areas. So I think we need to spread awareness at the root cause and uh, healthcare industry or healthcare providers should be reached and uh, as uh, you know be operational as they are at tier one cities yeah and uh, in actually for the lifestyle diseases like high blood pressure cholesterol etc actually in our health centers these things are given actually free of cost uh, oh, so true. that makes that makes it more uh, actually accessible to people mm. if you prescribe a list of medicines take all these things to avoid heart attack nobody uh, may be able to afford and the nobody will understand. So these things are provided at the root level, that is primary health centers. And uh, this is happening, I think, in uh, Kerala. Uh, this is um, uh, actually taken in a good way, I should say. Yeah. That that's true, ma'am. We uh, every day or some some of the other day we come up with some great uses from Kerala health uh, sector. Some new policies yes. has been made and policies has been revised. So I think we know how much of uh, you know great work Kerala state is doing in terms of healthcare. Uh, lot of importance is uh, given to health policies and uh, yes. activities. Uh, they get priority. Good. Uh, moving on to one of our under, another aspect of our uh, heart health from this industry perspective is leveraging technology and innovation. So we know how technology is important or the new advanced medical advancements which are coming up, which is helping in treating any kind of uh, health disease. So how is technology transforming cardiovascular care and what innovations are you most excited about? Uh, yeah, science is advancing, so is technology. So this is actually happening in uh, healthcare activities as well. So uh, we have to actually, when you want to change a valve, that is replace a valve, it used to be only surgery previously. And nowadays mm -hmm. you can change without surgery also, valves can be changed. That is called a TAVI, etc., where the aortic valve is just implanted across uh, without even a scar or opening the chest that is called TAVI. And also the pacemakers used to, used to be implanted with a, a, a slight opening of the skin, etc. So without uh, actually um, uh, hurting you, you they, there are leadless pacemakers also. These are actually advanced, uh, uh, advanced in technology which has been incorporated into you know, our science also, which is very helpful. Without surgery, you can have these uh, procedures. Um, uh, uh, these are actually newer developments which are very helpful. I, I think, ma'am, because it, it somehow reduces the time, it reduces the human effort, and it makes things more easier uh, and uh, faster. So that yeah. way, I think uh, the technology is helping medical industry or any other industry very well. Yes. Ma'am, moving on to my last question of the uh, conversation, that any last message from your side to all our listeners and audience, how can they take care of their health or you know, uh, on importance of their heart health on this special occasion of World Heart yeah, Day. Yeah, actually, World Heart Day, actually, the World Heart Federation has a theme every year. This year, uh, uh, the theme is Use Heart for Action. That yes. is, uh, yeah, um, uh, action means activities. So, uh, this theme actually tells you to reduce your actually risk factors for the heart disease by um, incorporating a, a healthy lifestyle, by doing a regular exercise and healthy lifestyle and stopping smoking, all these things. 
and uh, uh, activities. These actually should be spread across uh, your actually people around you, uh, your co-workers, your friends, your neighbors, your uh, relatives, friends. All the, this message should reach everyone. That is the our effort on World Heart Day. And this message, if it reaches everyone, and we can head in for a healthy heart and healthy world. Okay. You said it right, ma'am. This message should reach out to everyone and use heart for action. Use heart for good activities. You use heart, you know, for spreading love, joy, not for smoking or having some adulterated food like or any other thing which deteriorates your health. So, yes. Thanks a lot, ma'am, for sharing your insights and expertise with us because it matters a lot uh, to spread that awareness amongst everyone, all the listeners, and your contribution means a lot. And thank you so much for answering all my questions in such an elaborative and simple way that is very uh, helpful for our audience to understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Okay.